Let's talk about the bike because that's why we're here. This is a long tail cargo bike. Uh, so it has kind of a gap in the middle. You can see that normally uh, the rear wheel comes, you know, about this area, but there's a gap in the middle. Now, of course, in this gap, they have the air cooled controller, but uh, this is what's called a long tail cargo bike in which the rear end is kind of extended a little bit to provide extra space for cargo. So what you have between the two axles is about 52 inches worth of space between the two. So it actually extends a fair amount. This bike has been ridden around a few times at the show. It's got a couple of scuff marks right there, um, but it has actually a really nice kind of like an iridescent pearl color uh, to the paint, which I kind of like. But anyways, uh, so this bike has a lot of cargo accessories on it that you can see. Uh, so it has the front rack that is mounted to the frame. And this rack is actually an added accessory that you can get from the factory, as well as the rear rack. So the rear rack is, again, an, an accessory. Both of these come together in a set. Now the pricing for that set, I didn't get a clear answer on. Uh, somebody told me $399, so 400 bucks for the set, uh, which does kind of seem like a lot for a set of metal racks. Uh, they're pretty good, you know, I like them, but I think that's that might be some misinformation. This is a brand new bike. Um, so, you know, you know, take that for what it's worth. Uh, also with the front and rear rack, you do have a set of lights that are integrated into the main battery pack. So this is the front light uh, that turns on. Can't really see it in the daytime. And also in the rear, this is a light that is integrated into the battery pack as well. That's actually a, kind of a new thing for Unirow and other bikes that we've done reviews on for electricbikereview.com. They come with a spare uh, or not a spare, like a, a aftermarket or like a strap-on light that goes on the back uh, of the seat post right there that runs on its own little batteries. So this is cool. I like this to actually have some integrated lights. It's something that I've been a little critical on for bikes that have that in the past. Uh, but let's talk about some of the electronic details because this bike uh, definitely has some cool stuff on it. So you have the locking removable down to battery right here uh, that's becoming ubiquitous. <laughs> locks into position physically. It's actually not intentionally set for ignition. It just keeps the battery mounted securely onto the frame. There's a little button here to kind of show you a couple of readouts right there as to your battery power. This battery is a 48 volt 11.6 amp hour battery. Uh, so that's about 500 watt hours that you've got right here mounted in the down tube. And controlling it is the brains of the operation right here. This is a air-cooled controller in the sense that it is mounted externally on the bike rather than tucked away somewhere. Uh, this is a cadence-based pedal assist system. So that means that as you pedal, the controller is counting the rotations of the crank and dishing out power likewise. Now that is really good for kind of keeping the power up when you have a lot of cargo, but it's also a good system if you have some you know, considerations for like if you had knee surgery or some stress that kind of causes some pain. Cadence is really nice because all you have to do is rotate the pedals. You don't have to keep any tension on the pedals at all. You can switch down to a lower gear and literally just rotate them. So that's a really good consideration if you have some of those you know, physical needs. Um, with the bike, it comes with the platform, the wooden deck right here that screws into the top of the frame, as well as these foot pegs or foot platforms that kind of screw in right there. And these are mounted to the frame as well. So these are nice, nice and sturdy. And while we're back here, uh, kind of talking about the electric system, we'll kind of bounce back and forth, uh, tucked away in here past these wheel skirts is the 750 watt uh, rear hub motor. Uh, so that's a pretty good amount of power that you have on a bike like this. Now, naturally, the bike isn't terribly tall. You know, the bike is relatively short to the ground, but that having that big motor is really good for cargo. And that's what you get the bike for, is to carry big things or heavy things or long things like that. Uh, so let's finish up the electric system by talking about this display. This is the APT500C. So it has a power button on the bottom of the display that zaps a little bit with some vibration and shows you um, the system. So if you can see that, hopefully you can, uh, this has an automobile style motif to the readout. You have the speed right there in the dead center with your, uh, what they kind of show as a fuel tank, but your empty and full light for uh, the battery power. That's how much battery power you have left in the, in the battery pack. On the bottom right, you see there's a little foot icon uh, that shows you how much pedal assist you're in. So it's on level one, and if you press that button for plus, then zip, it goes up to two and all the way up to five. 
and you can scale that back down to zero. So one important thing to note is that the pedal assist level also caps the throttle. So this bike is equipped with a throttle uh, right there. So as you twist it, it will give you power without having to pedal at all, if you so wish. But it is capped by the level of pedal assist. So if you're in level zero, as you can see, the throttle does nothing. If you press the button to put it in level, let's say, two, then the pedal assist will assist you up to a certain point. And it will cap out at a at a speed, let's say just 12 miles an hour, you know, just kind of pull a number out of a hat. And then when you press the pedal assist up to level four, then that caps the top speed for the throttle. Instead of 12 at number two, we'll just say, you know, 18 for level four and so on. This bike does have a 20 mile an hour top speed. So this is a class two electric bike because it has the presence of a throttle along with the pedal assist that goes 20 miles an hour. One last thing to round up the electric system is you have some waterproof connectors right here if you wanted to uh, take it apart and replace any of the parts that are available. Um, and it has motor inhibitors from the brakes, meaning that when you pull on the brakes, there is actually a little magnet in right here that separates and that magnet sends a signal to the controller to cut off motor power. That way you're never fighting against the electric or mechanical system. All you gotta do is pull on them brakes and then the, the motor will stop going anymore. It'll let you coast, it's not gonna throw you off or anything like that, but it no longer provides assistance so long as you're on the brakes. And that's a really good safety feature, especially for bikes with a throttle or a hub motors. Uh, so these are fenders that mount directly to the front fork, which are kind of nice. Uh, the fenders do have a little bit of a mud flap right there. And these tires actually have tread that kind of extends all the way around the sidewall. I'm not exactly sure why they do that, because I sincerely hope you don't ride on the side of your tires, but uh, it makes for a really cool look. Uh, these are Kenda conniptions, uh, which are made in the 24 inch diameter and a 2.3 inch width. So that's a little bit wider, which provides some good surface area, good grip when you're riding with a lot of cargo. Uh, these are 12 in 12 gauge sorry these are 12 gauge spokes uh, on the front and on the rear of the bike uh, that come into the hub in the middle with a quick release so that will help you get the front wheel on and off unfortunately because it's a hub motor it's a little more difficult to get a quick release on the back uh, so you're gonna have to deal with pulling that off with a set of tools but nonetheless this comes off with a quick release and you have 180 millimeter rotor on the front so this has a mechanical disc brake system which is called the tectro aries if you're curious disc brakes are more or less a must on electric bikes because electric bikes are heavier and they go faster especially this bike is a lot heavier <laughs> just because it's a bigger bicycle at all but also because of the intended use of carrying heavy loads uh, so this one has some mechanical disc brakes in which when you pull on the handle up on top it will it, uh, kind of pull in that little caliper right there and then it squeezes in with a little pads onto the rotor itself inside of this little setup here. Uh, so I actually like mechanical disc brakes because they're easy to fix. <laughs> Hydraulic disc brakes have a lot of stopping power. They are superior in that sense, no bones about it, but I'm not as good at fixing them. <laughs> you do have some Schrader valves here for the tube, which is kind of nice because it's a lot easier to be able to fill up if you're out on the road, if you want to pull into a gas station or so and fill up your tires, that's really nice. You don't have to get any special adapters uh, for that. You do have a rigid front fork, which is quite common for cargo bikes, mostly because they want to keep things uh, fairly stable as you're riding with a with the front fork that kind of extends that could compromise the stability of it and in most cases you're not going to ride a cargo bike in a lot of off-road situations keeping on with the mechanical details we have a 170 millimeter uh, extension for the cranks on either side and you do have a aluminum platform pedal that has a little bit of a rubber texture on the edge to kind of grip your shoe as you're getting on and off and of course with government mandated reflectors I actually like the reflectors you know it doesn't bug me but some guys on mountain bikes don't want reflectors and that's a totally different thing anyways the fender that i was talking about in the front there's also one tucked into the back this one is mounted to the frame right here in the back of the kickstand mount and it actually has the wheel skirts kind of strapped over the fender right there it's not terribly common to see things attached to the fender other than say a reflector but in this case that's where the wheel skirts are and these wheel skirts are really nice for keeping especially kids when they have their legs sticking out right around here want to keep them out of the spokes so they're not interfering with anything you know endangering anybody <laughs> so 
on the back of the bike you do have the same tire you have a 24 by 2.3 so you got the same tire size for the front and the back of the bike some cargo bikes they have a tire that's a little bit lower in the back I've seen that before on a couple of them like the extra cycle or the Madison cargo bike this one's got it level it's 24 inch on both front and the back so take that for what it's worth some people actually like it when it's a little bit lower some people myself included I kind of like it when it's even so you have a lot of metal on the back here and that's one part about the frame that is not entirely clear when you take a look at the brochure and that is that you have you know this extension for the the top of the rack the platform kind of comes down over here as well as one two three four four of these wow <laughs> kind of four of these uh diagonal um tubing coming down to this other part of the frame so they didn't tell me how much weight the back of this can hold but i'm gonna guess the back of this can hold 150 pounds possibly more uh maybe up to 200 pounds it's meant to carry you know a second person if you want to uh, you have a seven speed uh shimano altus uh indexer or indexer up front and the shimano altus in the back uh, seven speeds is fine you do have a lot of electrical controls with the pedal assist and the throttle so having a smaller amount of gears is just just fine for this kind of application you do have a, an extended chain so this is a little bit longer of a chain to accommodate for the extra length of the frame and that's one thing to consider if you are shopping around for maybe an extra chain or say you want to change the color or the material of the chain uh count the links and count the length because a standard chain for a standard bicycle is going to be too short uh, on the front chain ring here you do have a a little bit of a plastic cover to kind of keep your pants out from getting chewed by the chain that is one-sided so it's on this section of it but it's not on the other side so it's not a double walled uh, protector for your pants but that's okay one other thing about the bike is that it's missing bottle cage bosses which would totally go right there because a lot of times you'll see a bike especially a step through bike with the battery in its place um, so I can understand why they can't put a bottle cage mount on top of the battery because that's well not wise but in this case you got a, a nice spot right here and especially down here you could totally get something right in there if you're feeling up for it you might even want to get a tap and actually make some spots right here because you could get a bottle you could probably get a second battery right back there if you were handy enough you can get lots of things in this space so you know that's kind of like unutilized but then again this is kind of like the first production run of this bike it is brand new and they don't haven't had a cargo bike in the past so perhaps they're going to improve that as time goes on another consideration while we're talking about uh, kind of compromises in the bike is that they went with this nice seat which has a pretty good uh footprint to it nice and wide i'd say about eight inches wide and it has some nice and it has some nice plush to it i mean it's called the velo plush <laughs> it's got some nice gel inside of there so it's a comfortable seat i like it however this is the lowest that the seat will go with the rack on here at all like i can't even maneuver it around even if i use the quick release down here uh you can't really get it any lower unless unless that rack is out of the way so if you plan on getting this rack with the bike hopefully you're a little taller or perhaps you'll have to switch out the seat to a seat with a different kind of extension for the rear because in the rear of this seat it also has a little bit of a handle right here and this handle is actually really nice but it is more or less redundant when you have this much of space to grip onto because a lot of times they have that handle back there so it's easy to maneuver the bike which is good but when you have this big rack around here then that's totally unnecessary to have a handle being covered up by a rack completely especially when it doesn't allow you to get the seat any lower but nonetheless if you didn't have this rack in the way and you plan on using this bike for carrying something other than small kids maybe a little bit bigger kids or maybe just cargo in the first place then yeah you could totally get that seat to pretty much any size that you wanted to uh, within the seat post tube Another last thing to talk about it is the overall height of the bicycle. So I was just talking about this height of the seat, but the handlebars themselves have a couple of quick releases on them that allow it to change. So this quick release is to change the orientation of the handlebars themselves, which doesn't entirely come in handy when you're riding the bike at all, but it does have a couple of other ones that make it a little more useful. It has a telescoping feature in which this quick release can be opened up and then the handlebars can telescope upwards 
They do have a little bit of a limitation with the wiring here, but it can extend quite a bit. Let's go ahead and lock that in. Okay. And the coolest of all is this quick release here when you pull up on the pin and then you pull out on this lever, then the entire handlebars can swing down and turn the wheel a little bit and then it goes down to the side. Now you might ask, why is that? Well, take a look at the entire height of the bike now. The entire height of the bike has changed. So it's no longer, you know, let's say three, four feet tall. It's now much smaller. Now the height of it is actually that seat that I just mentioned. That's the tallest point of the bike. So this is actually really handy if you wanted to put this bike into the back of a truck. If you have a truck with a canopy on it, you can pull the handlebars down, wheel this guy right inside. Or if you had an office in which it might be a little, you know, intrusive, you could lower the handlebars to kind of get it under a tall table, like workspace, or perhaps into a closet. So the handlebars, even though it's only one folding feature, on a bike that has a 24 inch wheel that's fairly low, and also the frame that's also low for the seat post tube and the head tube, then you have a total bicycle that has a pretty low profile to it, now, all things considered. Uh, so let's see, let's go ahead and pull this guy back up. And we'll lock it back into position by, there we go. And here. All right, so that is the Unirow Max Cargo. Let's go ahead and go for a ride and I'll show you what it looks like. So I was a little disappointed because I felt like I didn't have a whole lot of cargo that I could put on the bike to kind of showcase its cargo capacity. But I do have a little bit. I've got my bag uh, that I've been carrying all my camera gear and uh, all of my uh, show stuff. So here it is up front. Uh, so yeah, I'm glad that I actually had something to put up here. It's kind of nice because the, the backpack's been kind of straining me as I've been walking around all day and having the capacity to just toss it up front, it was, it was great. Very, very convenient. So I'm happy about that. This bike does have a torque-based pedal assist system and it's, it's not so great when you're on a steep hill like the one that I just climbed, but that's, you know, that's something that's a, kind of a trade-off in which you do get a lot of really, really smooth ease of use. Once you get the bike going, all you gotta do is just keep the pedals rotating and it works very, very well. Uh, so I could see why they did that for the sake of this kind of cargo bike, uh, to kind of keep the utility sort of high. Uh, so let me show you a little bit about how the bike works and then we will stop for a second. 